Happy New Year, friends. We're either on the 9th or 10th or 11th day of Christmas, depending on when you watch this video, or it might be off into the free future for all I know. But I'm grateful that you've taken the time to be with Christ Church as we pray together. We're celebrating the Feast of the Epiphany, the coming of the Magi to worship Jesus. We're celebrating a great feast, and I hope that you'll have a great feast at the end of this video. I'd encourage you to print out a bulletin so you'll know the order of service and be ready to join with us in all of the joy that we experience in the light of Christ, which has come into this world. Our opening hymn is number 109, the first Noel, verses 1, 3, and 5. <laughs> Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Join me as we pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue the song of the angels as we say, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us, who know you now by faith, to your presence where we may see your glory face to face through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us with eager ears now hear the words of Holy Scripture. 
A reading from the book of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 72, verses 1 through 7 and 10 through 14, responsibly by verse, as found in your bulletin. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. That he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice. That the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and the moon endure from one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall pay tribute, and the kings of Arabia and Saba offer gifts. All kings shall bow down before him and all the nations do him service. For he shall deliver the poor who cries out in distress and the oppressed who has no helper. He shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from opposition and violence and dear shall their blood be in his sight. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation. And as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and we've come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all of Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. When then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent, to Bethlehem, sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. And when they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you today in the name of our loving and liberating and life-giving God. Amen. January 5, 1985, I knew exactly what would happen 35 years later. I had it all nailed down. There would be a pandemic and we would all be separated and I would preach to a, I would preach to a cell phone, which I didn't even know what they were in 1985. I thought I had it all balled up, but, but you know, even today... The epiphany matters so much to me and I believe to everyone. The epiphany, Matthew's account of the birth of Jesus, is different from the others. In the same way that when you open gifts from your parents 
and from your partner and from your children, they all are different because children's gifts are given in one way and, and partner's gifts are given because of the love that you feel in relationship and parents' gifts are given because of that lifelong relationship. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John give us different gifts. Matthew's gift was to his own community, but it ripples out to us. You could very easily unwrap Matthew's gift by going and reading the first two chapters of Matthew today. It'll take you about 10 minutes. You'll be surprised because it won't have any shepherds in it. It won't have any stable in it. Uh, it won't have any Matthew, uh, uh, Joseph and Mary having to, to go to Bethlehem. It simply has Matthew's account, his package, his gift. And part of his gift is wrapped in a wonderful way. The beginning and end of Matthew are designed to do something that the center part is, is different from. Matthew's group was a very pious group of Jewish observers and those who began to value the Jewish tradition. Matthew's gift is to talk about Torah and the way in which Jesus fulfilled the law and the prophets. He didn't abolish them. But at the beginning and the end, Matthew does something really interesting. He enlarges the gift. At the end of Matthew's gospel, he does it in two ways. In Matthew 25, with the parable of the sheep and the goats, we had that a couple of weeks ago, where Jesus explains that whenever we do something for someone who is least or lost or lonely, that we're doing it for him. And so we need to look out for those who are less well off, those who have not had the advantages that you and I have known. And then at the very end, the last words that Jesus says is to go out into all the world and preach the good news. These two amazing moments open the gospel. They open it to the poor and they open it to the world. And the same thing happens if you read the first two chapters of Matthew's gospel. M Matthew leads off in a perfect way that every Jew would have understand. He leads off with a genealogy. And genealogies are found throughout Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Ge de these, these genealogies tell us who our parents and our grandparents and our forebears going back were. First and second Samuel, first and second Kings all have genealogies that explain whose parents, parents, parents brought this person into the world. And so Matthew does that for Jesus, but he, he does it in a sneaky way. He sneaks five women into the story and what is traditionally only a male story. He tells us about Ruth and about Bathsheba and about Rahab the harlot. They're part of Jesus's story, too. Just as in Matthew 25, we have to look for those who are lost and hungry and sick and naked and in prison. So it is that Matthew begins by telling us we have to tell the story and include all of God's people, not just the men who carried the name from one generation to the next. And that leads me to the other sneaky thing that Matthew does, because the first people to come and adore the newborn Messiah the first people to know that the Messiah was born were three magi. The word is carried forward in the tradition in our word magician. In fact, in other places in the uh, Old Testament and the New Testament, when the word is used, magician is the word that is the translator, sorcerer, if you would. But of course, in this story, we find these people as being uh, astrologers, people who watched the stars, who saw Saturn and Jupiter come together to make that magnificent star back on the 21st of December. Whoever they were, they were looking into the heavens for a sign that God was going to do something new. Much as you and I might look for a sign that God's going to make 2021 a different time, these men were looking for something new to happen. Within a few years and decades and retellings of the story, the Magi become more, they become known as kings. You'll see they're all turbaned and crowned as if they were someone special. Indeed, most people in, in the Dark Ages and in the Middle Ages couldn't imagine someone going to King Herod without having a crown on their own head. They gave them names too, Melchior, Caspar, and Balthasar. Over time, they began to assign different parts of the world. Mer Melchior from Persia, Caspar from India, Balthazar from Arabia. They became men of various kinds of ethnic colorings and remembrances. And their gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh, have been interpreted and reinterpreted again and again as gifts given to kings, <coughs> to, to prophets, and to those who will experience suffering. 
Matthew tells us that the gospel is for the whole world. It's not just for the Jewish people. That God's love and care for the world is for the whole world and not for a small sub subsect of it. In 1986, on January the 6th, Bishop Atkinson, the Bishop of West Virginia, a friend of mine, a man who had supported me in my vocation, came and ordained me a priest at Trinity Church in Parkersburg. I was given the vestment that I'm wearing today. It reminds me again and again that the things that we share with the world are only the things that we have received. The, the gifts that we give out in the world are the gifts that we received. I received love and care and direction from Bishop Bob. And I hope that I've given love and care and direction in the years that followed. And these three men, these three that looked up into the stars and brought the world to the Christ child, well, they for me are part of what I'm supposed to do to bring the world to see the light of Jesus, his love and his care. And most astonishingly, it all happens in a little baby. As I reflected back on 1986, I immediately then drawn to 1987, when Mimi and I left Wheeling Hospital with a, with a nine pound baby girl in our arms, uh, we looked at each other and tried to figure out what it would mean to care for this child and how fragile and small she needed, seemed and unable to express her needs. It seems to me that the church oftentimes is small and fragile and has difficulty expressing its needs. But along the way, God sends these lights. Now, part of it is that you are to look for the light. You are to look for the Christ child there in your home. You are to look for the ways in which God loves and cares. But Matthew would also tell you, you must go out and be the light. It's not enough simply to see the church as a place to be cared for, surrounded by gifts and the people that love us. It's also the moment that we use to leverage out into the world to go into all the world and tell the good news that God's love is for Persia and India and Arabia, that God's love is for South America and North America, that God's love is for the people that surround us, that God's love is for the poor and the lost and the hungry and the imprisoned. As I reflect on 35 years, I keep thinking back on the people who have brought me light. And I hope in these days, as epiphany dawns on us, that you will think about the people who have brought you light, people who have pointed the way and said, this is the truth and this is the path that you can take, people who have fed you or given you a place to stay. But then go and be those people. The wise men did not return to Herod as instructed by the king. They went on their own way on another road to another path. You don't have to always follow the norms and expectations of the day, but it is possible to be something new because of the light that has been shown to you. Caspar, Melchior, Balthazar, you have brought light to the world by reflecting the light that Jesus brought into the world. Now we must carry that light, be that light, share that light, shine with that light. This epiphany, this year, and for all the years to come. Amen. We share, as our teachers have taught us in the past, the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us join our hearts and minds with the whole world offering prayers to God. The prayers of the people is found in your bulletin. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Michael, Santosh, Steve, and Mark, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to his congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Donald and Larry, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor those on our parish prayer list and those we remember silently or aloud. And all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. And we conclude our prayers with the prayer for January the 1st, the Feast of the Holy Name of Jesus. Eternal Father, you gave to your incarnate Son the Holy Name of Jesus to be a sign of our salvation. Plant in every heart, we pray, the love of him who is the Savior of the world, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you, Share a sign of peace with those you can see and hold in your hearts those whom you cannot see today. Friends, during the week before Christmas, the bishop gave special dispensation for us to begin to share communion in a new way. I hope that you'll look forward to hearing messages about how to pick up the reserve sacrament and take it to your home so that communion can continue. We continue to be dispersed, much to our sadness, and here at this table, we will only offer what we can offer to you in your homes, but watch this space for the possibility of a real communion. Today, we prepare for a spiritual communion.
praying together the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And let us give thanks for the saving death and resurrection of Jesus, and ask him to be with us now. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask that you come spiritually into my heart. O oh, most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. The Epiphany blessing is one of the triple blessings, so there'll be three prayers with an amen at the end of each before the final blessing. May Almighty God, who led the wise men by the shining of the star, find the Christ, and let the light of light lead you also, that you may in your pilgrimage find the Lord. Amen. May God, who sent the Holy Spirit to rest upon the only begotten at his baptism in the River Jordan, pour out that Spirit upon you who have become have come into the waters of new birth. Amen. May God, by the power that turned water into wine at the wedding feast in Cana, transform your lives and make glad your hearts. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, be with you today and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Our closing hymn is number 128, We Three Kings. We'll sing all five verses, but we'll only sing the refrain after verses one, three, and five. <laughs>
Well, once again, Happy New Year to you all. Thank you for joining me as I celebrate uh, 35 years of ordination. I've got my ordination certificate here on the wall, which Bishop Atkinson signed in ballpoint pen. It, it's slowly fading out, and I kind of feel like Beauty and the Beast when the last pedal drops off the roads. I may not be a priest anymore. No, seriously, Bob was a wonderful guy. I gave him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh, uh, at that uh, ordination service, a uh, jar of Goulden's golden mustard, uh, and sent uh, frankincense of smelly stuff, a bottle of Old Spice aftershave, and myrrh being embalming fluid, a bottle of scotch. <laughs> I've tried to remember Bob fondly, and I'm glad that you got to share in those remembrances. Two days before Christmas, the bishop issued new guidelines about sharing the sacrament, and I have purchased now uh, little communion cups. It's got wine and a little piece of gluten-free bread. Uh, because it was two days before Christmas and my vacation came immediately after Christmas, I'm working on the way to do this, but I think that probably next Sunday you'll be able to come by and pick up the consecrated elements and then join me online or in your own home and receive the sacrament from the reserved sacrament, the same way that I bring it out to the sick and the shut-ins in the parish. So look for that information coming in the days to come. The needs for food continue to be strong in our area. I ask that you remember the parish uh, work in Graysonville and with the backpacks, weekend backpacks for kids programs. Uh, and as, as you're able to be charitable, that would be a wonderful thing to do. Please uh, know that you'll also have an opportunity through an e-blast coming out very soon to get the information about chalking your door. You may remember how we remembered Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar uh, and the date. Uh, last year, we did it here at the church in a big thing, and you'll be able to do it in your own home. So look for information about chalking the door. If you've got some sidewalk chalk, now would be the time to find it because it'll be Wednesday the 6th that we'll actually do an Epiphany celebration together. Friends, care for each other and pray for the parish. Pray for our nation in these times of transition. And pray for those who have COVID, for those who are being vaccinated against COVID, and for those who grieve the, the beloved ones whom they have lost, 334,000. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make God's face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up God's countenance upon you, give you peace today and every day. Take care, friends.